Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Hello, and welcome to my channel where we discuss the Power Platform. Today's episode is going to be an intro to Power BI. I'm going to have a look at how to get a data set, how to model that data set, how to build relationships, manipulations, and then visualize, and then finally, I'm going to touch on some DACs. This is really intended as um, a good video for anyone that wants to get into Power BI for the first time. So let's get into it. So to start building a Power BI report, we of course need some data. So I had to think about what could be quite an interesting topic to look at. And something that's quite interested me is the global temperatures around the world. So I want to see how, how can I actually visualize some of this climate change data and see how that is different across the world. So I came onto this uh, website, which is um, kaggle.com, where you can find some data sets. I'm going to pick up this global land temperatures by city CSV. So I'll download that, save that in a location. And another thing I thought would be um, quite interesting is actually I want to longitude and latitude so that I can produce some map data. So the first thing we do is we're just going to take these two data sets and save them somewhere where we can access them. So I have some of my files here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up Power BI Desktop. We're going to start from a blank desktop file. So this can be downloaded from um, the internet. So if you just type in Power BI Desktop Download, you'll be able to get this. So as that opens up, um, I'm just going to close that there. I'm going to get data. I'm going to find that file location. So we, we go to this um, temperature data and if I look at all the files, it's going to show me the Excel workbooks as long um, uh, alongside the comma separated files. So go ahead and we'll take that uh, global temperature by city and we'll bring that into our desktop. Just give that a second. And at this point, we're presented with whether we want to load the data or transform the data. As a rule of thumb, we should always transform the data first as we want to see that it's in the right format, whether we need to do any manipulations, etc. So we'll bring that in. Um, we're also going to bring in the um, other data set, which is the countries by location, which we're going to use in due course. So we'll bring that in as well. We've got a couple of sheets there, so I'm just going to select sheet one. Like this. Okay, so we're going to rename that to countries location so that's a little bit better uh, and global and temperatures by city that's okay for now now the first thing I notice when I look at this is that you've got the average temperature and you've also got the average temper uncertainty so I'm not too interested in the uncertainty at this point but I may I may use it at a, at a later stage so I'm just going to remove it um, I now have the average temperature and I notice that there are some fields in here which don't have a value. Now, if they don't have a value, it's not actually going to be useful um, when we start plotting, etc. And at the same time, I'm not going to replace this with any anything as there is no value here. So what I'll do at this point is I'm just going to remove those. So I'll deselect anything that has a null value. Now our, our data set is starting to get a little bit cleaner. Um, so now um, we notice that we have our cities here, we have our countries, we have a longitude and latitude, which is great. Um, and what we can do now is we've got this date here. Now, if we notice here, it's, it's formatted a little bit strangely. So one feature that I love in Power BI is this ability to do a column from examples. So I'm gonna do a column from examples and I'm gonna select this selection here. What I'm going to type in is that I, this column is going to be called date and Power BI is going to help me write this query. So what I'll do is it's actually 0111 and it's 1743. Okay, So it hasn't figured out what I want it to do yet just yet. So 0104, 1744. Okay. And you can see now it's actually figured out what I wanted it how I wanted it to be formatted. An actual fact, maybe I'll put uh, uh, dashes in between there because dates are usually with dashes, aren't they? So we'll just change that. And do a couple more. Okay, and 
Tyler's done the same thing here, so now we've got the 1st of July, 1750, etc. So you notice here that we do actually have a longitude and a latitude here, um, so we can, we can utilise that. Um, however, these are our per city, and also um, what I would like to do in this, in this report is actually utilise this longitude and latitude here because that is per country and I'm actually looking at more the country averages. So what I'll also do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this as well, like this. And now that we have this date column here, we do not need the date that was formatted, um, not in the right way for us. So we'll go ahead and remove that as well. So now our data set is, is ready. Um, a few other things we can have a look at. In the top bar, we've got this transform um, a panel here, which gives us various options, as well as this add column panel. Now, say I wanted to actually get the year from here, I would use the add column, as I want to keep the year as is, but I also do want to take the year um, and actually add it as another column. So that's great. Now I can do some summarizations based on that. So I'll be utilizing that. Um, and just to, just to have a, a show you of some of the other bits that we have here at the top, if we view query dependencies, we can see what tables and where they're coming from within our Power BI. Um, we can do some diagnostics and there's also a help toolbar up here. We might also want to just make sure we have um, some good titles up here. So just um, put a space between there, so it's average temperature. And we are nearly there, except this date is actually always the first of the month, um, which again seems a bit unnecessary, see, seeing as we don't, um, isn't the first is not actually there. This is actually a, a month, a global temperature by city. You see everything over here is the first. So what we'll do is we'll actually add a column and we'll look at the months as well, you know, to see that seasonal um, difference there. So let's add a date um, and we'll take the the start of the month. Okay, and I've actually, it's actually brought in the start of the month, but I actually want the name of the start of the month. Let's try that again. So we'll add a column, date, and we'll go to month and we'll call it name of the month this time. And we'll just check that and that's saying November, April, etc. So we're good. The next bit we'll have a look at is we'll actually go ahead and apply these changes. So we'll close and apply and let that data come into our model. So just give that a second. So as this loads, we'll now see those tables on the right hand side and we'll be able to drag and drop them and start using them within our uh, canvas um, within Power BI. So um, we've got various visualizations we can use. So we've got the graph visuals, we've got pie charts here, a simple table, um, as well as we've got, we can integrate R into our Power BI report, we can integrate Python into our Power BI report. Um, and we've got the field role here where we actually put in the data set there. Our data has now come into our Power BI report and we can start to have a look at what kind of things we can actually achieve in here. So I'll, I'll put in a table like this, have a look at the fields which I can leverage. Um, so first I'll just look at country and look at the average temperature by country. Of course this isn't very meaningful at the moment. One of the things I should check for is on this downward arrow what's happened here. So sum of all the temperatures across that whole period does not make sense. So what we'll do is we'll take um, the minimum, for example. So what's the minimum ever recorded temperature? Now, having a look at this, um, it'd be really useful to know what date ranges I have. So I've, I've dragged in the date here, and I'm going to put that into a, a filter a slicer, like so. And here what I can do is have a look at all the different date ranges I have. Um, what I could also do here is actually turn that into uh, a card instead and I could just take the date and I could take um, take it in that way so I can see all the different dates there. Um, we of course we've created this year filter that we can use instead so oops, let's 
So instead of using that one, um, I'm actually going to put in a card and put in our year. I'm going to use this card up here, like this. And you get, and it's actually done a summation there, which we don't want. So we're going to take the minimum. So we can have a look at 1743 is when the data set started. And when did this data set end? So here I'm just, I'm just kind of showing you what kind of things I would start having a look at before even building anything with my data set. So go for the maximum here. So this data goes up to 2013. Okay, that's really useful to know. Okay, that's just a little bit of a play. Now what we actually want to do in, in this section is actually have a look at the relationships. On the left hand side you have a report section, a uh, data section in which you can actually view some of that data, explore it, there's um, what you need to kind of have a look at, what's there. Now in here we have our relationship section. So what we can do here is actually make relationships between a couple of different tables. Now in this example what we want to do is we click manage relationships, we create a new one just here. And we want a relationship between countries and location and the, the temperatures by city. And we want it linked on the country name, as we want to bring in the longitude and latitude to actually build some maps. So we'll close that. Now, at this point, what's happened here is it's, it's put an arrow in. And there's a star here, which is relating to the many side. And this is the one side here. What that actually means is that there are many countries here and only one country here. Okay, that's great. So we're gonna see that. And it's a many to one relationship. So that means that whenever we filter using this country over here, it, it will filter our data set like that. So we can make sure our relationship's working before we get onto any actual report building. So this is a good, good thing that we should try whenever we put data in. So we have our country from global temperatures and we'll bring in the longitude and the latitude here, like so. And we see that um, we have a longitude and latitude, the report's not breaking. So that means we can go ahead and start building our first report. So we've, we've built our relationships and we've tested our data. So that means that we're now ready to start doing some actual building. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this page. I'm actually gonna delete this page because that was really um, one of our test pages just to make sure that everything was working okay. And what I'll do to start is that I'm, I'm gonna show you how you can speed up report building. And one of the things, things that we can utilize is the themes up here. So I'm gonna select um, one of these themes, I think that's that's quite funky. So we'll go ahead and actually use um, a very simple line chart to begin with. And so I'll put that on my canvas like this. And if I'm exploring this data, one of the first things I might think of is, has the temperature actually been increasing over this time period? So I will, what I'll do is I'm gonna drag in year into the axes and the average temperature into the values. Now I look at this chart and then I can see that there's a, a bit of a gap here and a bit of a gap here. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter on all the pages and I'm actually going to say, let's look at all the years um, that are greater than the 1900. So we'll actually restrict the data set um, over here to a hundred year period and we'll go to, um, and let's say less than or equal to 2000. So we're just looking at a hundred year period here. Um, thinking about whether the temperatures are increasing uh, during the 100 years between 1900 and 2000. Now I look at this chart and I see very high temperatures there in the average temperature, which makes me think that this average temperature is maybe not quite right. So we're going to go for an average instead. Here's one the average across, across each of those years and we can definitely see an increase there, so that's quite interesting. And I can use this analytics feature on the, on the right hand side here and actually add a trend line so you can see that that's, that's definitely increasing. Okay, now this is great, but perhaps I wanna look at that by country. So what I'll do is I'll use, I'm actually gonna use a slicer here like this, and we'll put that kind of on the right hand side. And this actually allows um, my user to kind of go in and, and filter this. So what I'll do is I'll get a bit smaller and I'm gonna put in the country 
And I'm also going to put in the the city as well, so that they can actually look into the cities once they're into a country. So I'm actually from the United Kingdom, so let's have a look at that. And we can see the increase there. So our average temperature in, in the UK, you can see, is um, usually it's between 8 and 10.5. The trend is definitely going up. And if we have a look at some of the uh, cities there, we can have a look at Oxford, or Oldham, Oxford, for example. And we can see that increase there as well. So immediately we've built this interactive report and you can see that across the page, um, various, various things are filtering when you click on them. Now the great thing I can do is I can copy and paste charts. So I can paste a chart like this and I can try something else. I can try a pie chart. Uh, so for this example, that doesn't quite look that great, but quite easily I should be able to flip it into a bar chart, for example, if that would be a better uh, use of the data there. I could also get the data set to, to filter and slice by date instead. If I want um, a very sm smaller data range, for example, you can see how everything is interacting on the page. We'll put it back to the United Kingdom just to see that. So you can see that between 1936 and 1959, there isn't much of a trend there. So that's quite interesting there as well. When we think about introduction to Power BI, one of the things we could definitely take a look at is the custom visuals. So, so far we've touched on all the visual some of the visualizations in this pane here. Now, what you could do is you could get more visuals like this, and I just have to sign in. Um, so, let me just do that. Now that I've signed in, I can actually um, look at the custom visuals within here that people have built. Um, within organisations or by individuals as well. So we have various categories. Um, we've got the Power BI certified, so these have actually gone through a, a certification process. Um, so for example, let's pick up one of these. Let's pick up one of the editor picks one here. So I quite like this infographic designer, so I'm going to use that one. So as soon as I've clicked that in, that will actually appear in this section here. So I'm going to create another page and so go ahead and use our infographic um, report um, visual visualization here. So we'll have a look at is we'll do a similar thing to what we did on the first page. So we'll select the the year and we're going to look at the average temperature as well. So you can see it's quite similar. It's actually done some straight away. So we're going to change that to an average instead. Now there's a lot of data here, so it, it's quite a lot to sort through when you're first looking at it. So what we'll do instead is we're going to restrict this page only to just uh, five or six years just to have a look at how it's been changing. So this time I'll place my year um, filter on this filter pane as being, and I'm just going to do a basic filtering and all I do is I'll just pick a five year window just to have a look at that like this. So this is our five year average. So you can see it hasn't, hasn't really changed much at all actually. Um, but what we can do, which is the cool thing about Infographic Designer, is that I can change the shape, so I can show diamonds instead. Um, perhaps I want to show um, a, a different item, so I could show people in there, or transportation, or um, a tech symbol. So let's go ahead and show something that relates to uh, temperature. So have a look at what else there is. So we've got nature. So we can show a sun symbol. So actually that's that's gonna be a nicer view of what's actually happening. Of course we can play around with this. I can pick some years going back and then we'll see a much more gradiated uh, difference there. So we'll make sure that's sorted by the average, um, sorted by the year actually, so that we can go up. So that's going uh, descending. Uh, what we can also do is actually um, change it so that it's multiple units so it's actually more showing that that um, difference there as well so that's the word about visualizations um what we'll now look at is we're going to touch on dax i'm going to keep this very very simple as this is very much an introduction to a power bi video now, DAX is a formula language we can use um, on top of this canvas. So every time we actually pulled in that, that temperature, you saw that it kept doing an average. Now that's not 
what we want to do. So what we can do is we can create measures and we can create columns. So within global temperatures, if I create a measure, just to show you what that would do, I'm going to call this, every time you utilise this measure, I want it to be the average temp. And there's a set of different formulas you can use, so I'm going to go for average. And the average I want is to be of the average temperature. Of course, numeric fields oops, will have um, an average that can be utilised. So if you did this with a text field, it would not work. Like this. Now we've got this measure created, and if I now pull this measure in, you'll see that on here, I can no longer select um, what it is. So this average temperature for this page, which is the years that we've selected, is 18.4 degrees. And you can use these, um, and they're a lot better in actually knowing how that summation is going to happen. The other thing we can do is we can create a column. So, for example, if I had a table, so I'm just going to move this out of the way, like this, and I wanted to show my country and my city and my average temperature um, for the time period on this page. Perhaps I want to join together country and city, and I just want to concatenate that up. So what I'll do here is I'm going to create a column. Now columns are against every every row in the data set. So I'm going to call it place. Okay. So we'll do country, like this. And we'll use the ampersand, but in between we do want um, a space and a dash just to make that look a bit neater and then we'll bring in the city like this and you can see Power BI is quite intuitive in, in terms of picking up these and we'll actually use a double quotation there like this okay and then we'll have a look at that one let's give that a second um, and now we can actually pull in this place and you can see that it's now going to concatenate our country and column all together. This is great. Uh, one of the things we haven't actually looked at is the maps. So we pulled in our longitude and latitude. So let's have a look at, um, again, this is very much an, an intro to, to Power BI, so we're not going to do anything too wacky here. But we'll use one of the um, uh, pre-built maps that uh, Power BI actually has. So you can see here, if I hover over this little world icon, it's called a map. So I'll pull that in like so. What we're going to do is we're gonna, we could utilise the actual country or the city as a place, as a location. But just to show um, how we can use the, the two data sets together with the relationship, I'm actually going to bring in the, the longitude and latitude like so. And the size is going to be based on the average temperature from this report. Uh, this table here. So the bigger this is, the higher the average temperature. And what we'll do is we'll actually just have a look at uh, that for one particular year, just to have a look at how that's differing. So we'll drag that into the, the canvas like this, and I'm going to do a, a drop down, and I'm just going to select um, the latest year that we've filtered our data out for, like this. And uh, to make it even more specific, actually, and this is this is purely for analysis. We're not actually going to be publishing it with all these filters. Is I'm just going to have a look at it for December, so one particular month. Okay, and you can now what, what was going to happen here is that as we hover over some of these, it will show you the average temperature in that region. So as we expect, some um, some areas are are colder, some areas are warmer. So if we go here, we have an average of about five. You can see most of Europe is looking quite similar at that point but if we come over here if you look at india for example the average temperature is about 19 so that circle is actually bigger so that's a very quick way of um, showing um, points on a map i really hope you enjoyed that video it was a whirlwind tour of uh, some of the great features that power bi has i will also be re um, releasing a video on introduction to power apps and introduction to microsoft power automate and the idea is i just want to entice people to start using these great tools. Um, so at this point of time, I may or may not have released these videos yet, but if I have, go, go have a look at them. If I haven't, then look out for them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.